somebody, a secular humanist, years and years ago, said that once we get control of the public schools, the church won't stand a chance. One hour on Sunday can't compete with seven hours a day, five days a week, plus Disney, add Disney Channel and Nickelodeon and MTV and all of those other things to the mix. Dozens of hours a day can't compete with the church. The church can't compete with that one hour a week. 20 minutes. I mean, I'm, I'm already at 20 minutes now. Y'all, some of y'all say, come on now, we won't be here too long. Really? I'm getting hungry already. What are we going to do about that, church? What are we going to do? What can we do? Somebody said earlier this morning, Jane, right? Hey, pray. That's a good start. Pray. That's a good thing to keep on doing all the way through the process is pray. Pray for these young people. Put their name on your prayer list. And pray for these young people. Pray for those younger than them. Pray for the high school students. Pray for each other. Pray. Absolutely. What about committing to volunteer, to do whatever we can to teach them, to train them, and to help them to grow strong in the faith where they're not blown about by every wind of doctrine that comes along like Ephesians 4 says. And we're to be mature. And God has equipped the church with the ministries of the prophets and the teachers and the pastors and the evangelists for the equipping of the saints, for the instructing of the saints, for the strengthening of the saints, so that we can all be mature in Jesus Christ. So we're not blown about by every idea that comes along. It sounds good. There's a better way. God has given us the Spirit of God, the Spirit, the presence of the Father and the Son to help us because we can't do it on our own. The Spirit will guide us. The Spirit will direct us. But we have to be open. Our sails have to be open to the presence and the life-giving wind of the Spirit so we can show, so we can realize there's a better way ourselves because we can't impart what we don't have. So we can truly have faith, a strong and abiding faith in Jesus so we can impart that to these kids because you can't give somebody something you don't have. And we can't do it alone. The Spirit of God will come along. We sow the seeds in many different ways. The seeds of the Word of God, as Jesus talked about this parable, the sower and the seed. The, the, the Word has been sown in the hearts of these young people. But as Jesus said, that wicked one will come and try to snatch it away as quickly as possible. Or it will be thrown among rocks where it won't be allowed to, to get a deep root in and of itself and to really get deep and strong. And it will spring up for a moment. But, but when the heat is on, it will wither and die, he said. And then there's that seed that falls among the thorns and the thistles and the weeds. And the weeds and the thorns grow up with it and choke it. Because the weeds and the thorns are the cares of this world, the concern about other things. And then there's the seed that's sown on the good ground. That brings forth, forth fruit and abundance. Abundant fruit. Life-giving fruit. Fruit for the person, the believer, and for others through whom God works to bless others. The believer. We want those young people today to be good ground. We want to pray that it's good ground, that if we do all that we can to help that seed to continue to grow, to bear fruit, to be strong, to withstand the heat and the pressures of the day. And we can't do it with willpower. We can't just be intellect. We got to have some help. The help of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God. Will guide us and direct us that we will surrender. Open our hearts and our minds and our sails to the life-giving, empowering wind of the Spirit.
These young people today are going to be initiated into the kingdom of God. And this is the difference. For folks who have had heard this before, the difference between the kingdoms of this world and the kingdom of God is very simple. The kingdom of God is a place in which we love God with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. We love God with everything that we have, and we love our neighbor as we love ourselves, and we voluntarily, not coerced, but voluntarily use things and resources and pleasures to love people and to love God. But in the kingdoms of the world, it's the direct opposite. We love things and we love pleasures and we use idols, false gods, to get those things and we use people to get those things. Our love of things rather than love of people. I just saw the story of a guy who had hired somebody to work for him. He was just a horrible boss, but he was married to a woman and this woman began to get on his nerves for various reasons, I guess. And he decided that after you know, realizing that they were going to have to get a divorce and that she was going to get a lot of his money, he decided he was going to try to, he was going to kill her. <laughs> and he ended, long story short, he ended up in prison. He ended up in prison. And because uh, he got caught soliciting the murder of his wife. But in prison, even in prison, someone set him up pretending to be a hitman and got him on videotape, again, trying to, to set up a hit on his wife and a hit on his employee who had alerted the authorities. Wanted to steal from prison and kill him. And he said, to, but he said this. He said, but I got two dogs, two wonderful dogs. After you kill my wife, you make sure you take care of those dogs. That is twisted, brothers and sisters. Think about that. That's what that, that's the that's the love of things and pleasures. Brother, that's an extreme example. I could go on and on. But in the kingdom of God, we love God with our whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, and we love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts, Romans 5 says, by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, which is God Almighty coming to take up residence in our hearts and in our lives. And that's what we're praying for today. For us as a church, for these young people, for us to equip them in their walk with Jesus Christ. 